The text that calls for our attention this Lord's Day comes to us from Philippians chapter 1, and especially these words. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent and be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. You're invited to be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The pre-op nurse walks into the patient's room who is about to undergo surgery. She tells this patient, a female, that she is confident that she will come out of that surgery much healthier right away. And that in the long run, she will be much stronger. The nurse says this to this patient, who she knows full well has shown disregard for her health for the better part of three decades. The nurse is confident enough in the surgeon to know that even despite this person's neglect of their own well-being, that the surgery will be for their good. Paul, in our epistle reading for today, speaks about having confidence in someone or something as well. He says that he is confident that the work that God has begun in the Philippians, through the preaching of his word and through the washing of baptisms, well, that work he will bring to completion on the day when Jesus returns. And what was that work that God had begun and would bring to fulfillment? Well, put simply, it was the work of making those Philippians righteous. And already, though, this way of speaking might raise a couple questions for those of us who have heard the theology of the church taught more than once. I mean, isn't this work fully done at baptism? Doesn't one there receive the full righteousness of Jesus? Well, yes, indeed. And yet, the manifestation of that righteousness that is received is not manifested perfectly in the day-to-day life of the believer. It is not manifested perfectly because the devil, the world, and our flesh remain. In fact, perfect manifestation of that righteousness that is given to us, well, that will only be seen on the last day. And that is why Paul writes that this work will be completed then. But what about now? What of the righteousness that we have been given? What of its manifestation in our day-to-day life right now between our baptism and that beautiful last day. While we know it will not be perfect, should we expect that manifestation of righteousness to grow in our life? Well, let us listen to our text. For Paul prays there that the Philippians would indeed abound in love more and more. He prays that their knowledge of God and his ways and that their ability to discern what is good would grow as well. As Paul says, he is confident that this kind of growth will happen in the Philippian Christians. They will grow in these things so that they are able to approve what is excellent, in order that they might be pure and blameless on the last day, having the fruit of righteousness that comes from Jesus Christ, all over the tree of their life. So let me ask you a question. Should I, as your pastor, have the same confidence about you that Paul had about the Philippians? Or for that matter, should I have that kind of confidence in regards to my life and the growth of righteousness there? You know, quite frankly, sometimes it seems as if we talk, as if God did one work for us at baptism, 
and if, as if he'll do another work on the day of his coming, but that in between those two, we really shouldn't expect much change or growth. Sometimes we talk about our lack of love as something that we shouldn't be all that concerned about since we find such coldness all too natural for humanity most days, even Christians included. We'll say that we can't talk about the faith to others because we don't know enough, and yet we'll really not do anything to take any steps towards knowing more about the Word of God. We think we've got everything wrong and right all figured out, as long as we follow the platform of our preferred political party. And therefore, we think that we don't really need to grow in our discernment of what is right and wrong. We think we're in through baptism, and we'll get in on the last day. So why worry too much about what's going on right now? And trust me, I understand why we are so hesitant to speak about growth in righteousness in our life now. Actually, we could say there's sort of two reasons we're hesitant to talk about it. One reason is theological. In other words, we don't want to talk too much about growing in righteousness because we fear that someone might hear that and believe that they can become right with God by growing in the good things they do. We wouldn't want someone to think that because we know the central teaching of the scriptures is quite the opposite. That there's nothing we can do to become righteous before God, but that Christ and his sacrifice on the cross is the one who makes us right with God. But I really suppose it is the other reason that is perhaps more pressing for most of us hearing this sermon that explains why we are hesitant to talk about growing in righteousness. And this is more of a practical concern, you might say, the main reason we're afraid to talk about it is because we know ourselves too well. We are aware that we often have sins in our lives that seem to stick to us for decade after decade. Things that almost seem to be more a part of our identity than our last name. We don't often see a lot of progress in ourselves in many areas. If we struggled with worry as a child, we find that we still struggle with it as age comes. The lusts of our youth don't seem to have faded with youth. And indeed, on the whole, things like desiring wealth or fame, sometimes they seem to only grow with age, not diminish. So how was it that Paul could be so confident about the Philippians? Were they just better people than us? Did people in former days find it easier to overcome sin? Did they have more free time and less distraction in order to grow in knowledge of the world of the word and therefore discernment? Well, while there certainly were cultural differences between them and us, the struggle against sin on the whole was not all that different. No, the Philippians were not better people than us. They didn't just have stronger wills or less temptation. So why was it that Paul was so confident that this work of increasing righteousness that would be perfected on the last day would go on? Well, here is the reason. Paul wasn't really confident in the Philippians at all. He was confident in God. He said to them that the real reason he was confident that God would day by day complete this work in them that he had begun was because they were partakers of grace with him. He told them that he knew that because of the way that they stood with him while he was in prison for defending the gospel. Yes, he was confident in the Philippians' growth because he knew they were partaking of grace. And here is the point then. If the manifestation of righteousness that you have been given in Christ is up to you to make it grow and show, 
well, then you should be very pessimistic. For you know well the ways of your own sinful flesh. But thanks be to God, that growth is not up to you. It is up to God to bring forward. And that is why we can be confident. Because we know the ways of the Spirit, whom God has given to do this work in us. The only thing we can really do is to make sure that we are partaking of God's grace as often as we can. And then that we participate in the mission of God as it unfolds around us in our lives. And in general, that simply means this. Partaking of the weekly gathering of God's people around word and sacrament. And then daily taking time to read the word, to think on it, to pray about it to God. Oh, there may be other opportunities to partake of grace as well, but those two, being in worship and studying the Word daily, well, those things should be absolute no-brainers for us Christians who understand well the weakness of our flesh and the power that God places in His Word. Yes, as we do those things, God will give us many opportunities to participate in His mission that mission that leads to love abounding and knowledge growing and discernment increasing. So yes, I am confident that God will bring about this good work that he began into you. That he will bring it to completion on the day of the Lord's return. I am confident that he will do that work day by day in your life and in mine from now until then. No offense, that confidence has very little to do with you. And it sure doesn't rest in any confidence I have in myself. In fact, the more I think about you or me, well, the much more likely I would be to grow rather pessimistic about the whole situation. If it were just about you and me, I would put becoming more loving and more perfectly discerning of good and right into the category of not likely or impossible. It is like the patience that I mentioned in the beginning of the sermon. If that patient's wholeness and health were simply up to them, or if they had to step in and perform the surgery on themselves to bring wholeness and health back to themselves, well, that nurse wouldn't have had anything to speak of confidence at all. Instead, she was confident in the work of the surgeon. She was confident that there was another who could come and bring wholeness and health. So also I am confident because the work of bringing that righteousness that was given to you in baptism to better manifestation, well, that is the work of the surgeon named God. It is his work to bring you wholeness and health in spiritual ways. That's the only thing I have to do, is just to remind you, be partakers of grace. Be partakers of the grace that the babe of Bethlehem came to make accessible to you. The grace that he made possible to you through his perfectly righteous life and his beautifully sacrificial death. So with me, become partakers of grace. Weekly here, daily in your home. Repent of when you have not. Repent of the times when you've bought into Satan's lies that growth is not needed or expected anyways. Repent and return to Jesus. For he's the source of grace. And that is exactly how God has promised to do this work this work he began in you in holy baptism, this work he will complete on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is his work, and he will do it as we partake of his grace. Therefore, indeed, may all glory and praise be to our God, the one who works in us this good work. Amen.